Columbia's Department of Special Events presents at this time a special transatlantic broadcast linking London and Chicago, bringing you a two-way conversation between that famous radio pair Lum and Abner. For the first time in their eight years on the air, Lum and Abner are separated. Chester Locke, who plays the role of Lum Edwards, is on a vacation tour of Europe with Mrs. Locke and a group of friends. In London, he's pausing long enough to call up his old friend Abner in Chicago, played by Norris Goff, who interrupted a fishing trip in Wisconsin to return to the air for this transatlantic broadcast. Continuing the story of their famous radio serial, sponsored by the makers of Postum, you will remember that when Lum and Abner signed off for the summer, Lum was leaving for London to claim an inheritance supposedly left by some remote ancestor. He's written Abner back home that he will telephone him from England to tell him about the inheritance. So now, in an actual two-way conversation between London and Chicago, we bring you Lum and Abner. Uh, I think that's our ring, Squire. I'll answer it. Get your life. Yeah, more likely somebody wants... Hello? Got him down, store. Long distance calling Mr. Peabody. Uh, this is me. Just a moment, please. Here's your party. Go ahead, please. Uh, hello, Abner. Yeah. Uh, who, who is this? This is Long. Who? Long Matters. Hey, can't you hear me? Yeah, but uh, when did you get back? I thought you were still in England. I am. Well, w- wait a minute. This ain't no ghost talking to me, is it? No, it's me, I tell you, and don't argue with me. I've got something important to tell you, and it's costing me $10 a minute to talk to you on this telephone. So i got to hurry. A uh, telephone? From England? Yeah, now listen. Uh, Lom, you're just joshing. They couldn't run their telephone poles clean across the ocean. Wouldn't have no place to set them. Well, it don't go over regular telephone wires. I'm talking to you on a shortwave radio. Well, <laughs> I'm using a telephone. Well, I am too, but it's hooked up with shortwave. Uh, signals like Boy Scouts uses? No, for goodness sake. Well, what difference does it make? Well, I want to know how we're doing this. Well, I don't know myself. They tried to explain it to well, me, did but... did you say we're on the radio now? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Not a regular telephone. Well, <laughs> first time I was ever on the radio. Uh, we ought to sing or do something. Uh, if you'll just wait a minute while well, I'll run over to the place and get Elizabeth down here with her guitar. Well, I ain't got time for you to get nobody down there, Abner. This is costing me $10 well, a minute. Well, I'll sing something by myself then. She's only a bird in a guilty cage. Abner. A beautiful sight to see. But her beauty was so furry, old man's gold. Abner, will you set that up? Uh, there ain't nobody hearing it but me, and I ain't going to pay no $10 a minute to sit here and listen to you sing. Well, we're, if we're on the radio, why, you don't know who all's hearing it. Well, this ain't no regular radio, though. This is short wave. Regular radio is long wave. Well, you must have that mixed up, Lum. <laughs> this must be the long way we're using her. You couldn't hear me clean over there in England. No, I ain't mixed up no such a thing. The short wave is longer than the long way. Well, uh, uh, huh? The long wave is the short one, and the short wave is the long one. If you want to talk a long ways, you use the short wave, and if... Well, here I am spending $10 a minute trying to explain something to you that you won't understand again and get done. I won't, huh? I could send you to school deeper than that. Well, school ain't started here yet. And besides, I don't want to go to school no way. Well, just forget about that. What I called you up about, I wanted to tell you that... Hey, you having a good time, Mom? Huh? Uh, how do you like England? Oh, fine, fine. Well, <laughs> how's Elizabeth and Gretchen, little oh, girl? Oh, just fine, just fine. You been catching any fish? Well, no, I ain't to speak of. I've been out lots, but I ain't done no good. It just seems like the elements is all again us. Yeah, We've had too much of rain to go into with here. The water's awful high. Yeah. Well, I've been seeing some wonderful sights. Well, bless your heart. <laughs> you know that actor feller that I got acquainted with on the boat? Yeah, you read me about him at Meech's. Yeah, he's taken down sick, you know. 
Well, I do know. Yeah. They had well, how do you seem on. to be getting along? Oh, just fine. Yes, well, huh? Everybody's been awful nice. Well, I do know. They talk just like we do over here, only they do. different. Well, can't pronounce the words very good. Uh huh. Well, did you get uh, seasick going over on the boat? Well, they said that's what it was, but personal, I don't think so. Just, just a boat rocking never would have made nobody as sick as I was. I think I was pizen. You asked? I was. Oh. I'm all right now. Uh huh. I wish you could have sold that boat. Well, I had anything beat I ever seen in my life? Well, Cedric's got a new boat too. Well, this one's bigger than Cedric's. I know that thing's bigger than the hotel in there at the county seat. <laughs> well, for the land sake. Oh, they had entertainment on the boat and everything. Uh huh. Yeah, we win the ship's pool coming over. You did? Yeah, nearly nine hundred dollars. Well, good for you. Good for you. Everybody got up and preformed and I sung and they had an orchestra and we danced. On the boat you danced? Yes, sir. Well now you better be careful about sitting you that long. You're liable to tip that thing over. You know better than to stand up in a boat. Oh, this is too big for that. We had a regular square dance and everything. None of them know how to square dance till I learn them how. Then we had one every night, and I done the calling for them. <laughs> oh, well, that ain't nothing. We, we've had two square dances here since you left. Two of them? Yes, sir. I agree. Quick as I leave town, they start turning the town upside down with a bunch of social activities. How was the 4th of July picnic? Oh, it's over. We done had the 4th of July over here. Uh, did you have a good time? Well, I was on the train. But I asked about it over here in England, and they don't have it over here. Don't have a 4th of July? Well, they have it, but they don't celebrate it. Well, what date do they celebrate it on? Well, they don't. That's what I'm talking about. They never hear of it. Well, uh, do they have Christmas and New Year's? Oh, yeah, sure. But they don't have the 4th of July or Thanksgiving either or, or Washington's birthday. Oh, well, I'd a whole lot rather live over here than where a fella gets a holiday once in a while. Well, here, we well, here, we get to talking here. I want to tell you what I call well, up I, about. when are you going to Paris, Lom? Well, I'm going to Holland and then to Belgium before I hit Paris. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, who, ha, ha, woman that you written me about, that girl you met on the boat? Yeah. Harriet Wood, I believe you yeah. said her name was. Yeah, well, she's here with me. Is she? Is? Yeah, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Well, are you a spark in there? Uh, a little on the side. <laughs> Don't you tell that on me around that Pine Ridge there now. I won't breathe it to a soul, not a soul. Now, you be careful now. Don't hop the broomstick while you're over there. Oh, I ain't, I ain't. And you just take How's everybody there in Pine Ridge? How's Cedric and oh, Grandpappy Spears? Just fine, fine. Grandpappy's just looking spry every day. <laughs> yeah. He, well, how's little Nancy store. and Shirley May? Well, just fine. Oh, just fine. It's fine as hell. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, sir, it sure is good to hear you, boys. Yeah. Well, oh, wait a minute. I forgot uh, what I called you up about that. Uh... Uh, just a minute, Lom. Uh, just... Huh? What did uh, you start to say? Just a minute. Say? There's a customer coming in. Uh, hold the phone just a minute till I wait on him. Well, here, Abner. Abner. Uh, never mind. Wait a minute, never mind. Squire said he'd wait on them for me. Well, I can't stand here and hold a wire at $10 a minute while you sell somebody 10 cents worth of potatoes. Potatoes? How'd you know that's what she wanted? A uh, dime's worth of potatoes, Squire. <laughs> Lom, could you tell that all the way from England? At, or just a minute, wait a minute, Lom. I believe you're wrong. She's looking at the dress good. Abner, I called you up to tell you about my inheritance. Yes, sir, that's what she's doing, buying a dress pattern. <laughs> Uh, hits the winter Abernathy, and she's got a whole garden full of potatoes, Lom. Abner, I'll know. write you a letter about that inheritance of mine. I, I just looked at the clock, and I've already talked up 90-some-odd dollars worth. Well, uh, how you coming on that inheritance? You ain't said nothing about That's it. That's what I've been trying to tell you for ten minutes, and every time I start... Uh, huh? Oh, Squire says to tell you hello, Lom. Hello. I mean, tell him Hello. And uh, the widow Abernathy, she says hello. Oh, well, tell her hello. hello. I've seen some lawyers when I first got over here. Uh, and... Wait just a minute, Mom, just a minute. Uh, what is it, Squire? I said to tell Long to drop me a line the first chance he gets and uh, tell me all about his trip. Oh, well, he says he's having a fine time. 
Well, uh, what did he found out about his inheritance? Uh, has he gotten the money yet? Well, I don't know. He's just fixing to tell me now. Uh, hello? Uh, you started to tell me about the inheritance, Lom. Uh, uh, did you get it? Uh, Lom? Lom? Hello? Well, I reckon he's hung up. Hello? Well, I never said goodbye. Well, that crazy idiot. <laughs> Call me all the way over here from London to tell me about that inheritance and then forget and hung up the phone before he done it. Absent mindedest fella I ever seen in my life, that long Eddie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 